Hey everyone, my name is Olaf, and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make this exact animation in Blender. So you will learn how to make the ocean, and then how to make the ball float in the ocean. It's uh, not a very hard tutorial to follow, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off the tutorial by switching from Blend Render to Cycle Render, because that looks way better. And then let's go into the modifiers and add the ocean modifier for our cube. So go down to the ocean modifier, and then I'm going to repeat the ocean modifier two times on the x and y axis, so increase both values to 2. And then I'm going to increase the subdivisions, which um, makes the um, ocean higher poly. And then I'm going to decrease the choppiness to, let's say, 0.7. By increasing the scale, you can also uh, make the waves higher which is what I just did. So let's go to the next step in this tutorial, which is to animate the time. And by animating the time, we will make the waves move. And I'm going to move to frame 250, and then write in 20, and click I again. I think in the final animation, I actually made it uh, 10 in this frame, but it doesn't really matter, it's just the speed of the animation. And by changing the keyframe interpolation, you will make the uh, waves move at the same speed throughout the whole animation which is kind of important. And as you can see, the animation works great. So the next step in the tutorial is to add the controller plane, which is going to control the movement of the sphere. So left click to move the 3D cursor, and then click Shift A and add a plane. And when a plane is added, we're going to subdivide it. So go into edit mode and then click S to scale it up. And then click W and subdivide and do it two times. I'm going to make a vertex group with all these vertices. So go into the um, vertex groups and add a new one and click assign. Okay, so the next step in the tutorial is to add a modifier. And the next modifier is a shrink wrap modifier. So let's click add modifier and then add the shrink wrap modifier. And by adding the shrink wrap modifier to the plane, with the cube as the target, which is the ocean, you will see that the plane follows the movement of the waves, which is important. And what we're going to do next is to add the sphere and then make the sphere follow the plane. But we're not going to set the sphere parent to the plane, so I'm going to show you how to make the uh, sphere follow and still make it work. So uh, click Add UV Sphere by clicking Shift A and then add a modifier and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to the sphere and two or three subdivisions and I click smooth and then it's time to add the constraints so add one copy location and then one uh, copy rotation and make the target the uh, plane and then the vertex group the group that you added earlier and then do the same for the uh, rotation and the same vertex group and before I start the animation, I'm going to change the uh, location of the origin point. So go into edit mode and click G, then set to grab the object on the set axis. And that is going to uh, move the origin point lower down on the object. And yeah, something like this. And then go back to object mode. And then let's play the animation. And as you can see, the um, sphere follows the um, movement of the waves but it might be a little bit too far up right now so I might go into edit mode again and move it a little bit downwards on the set axis to move the origin point. There's not really a right answer for where the ball is supposed to be in the water because that depends on the weight but for this tutorial I'm going to leave it around here and now we can actually move the ball uh, through the water by selecting the plane. If you right click and then click G, you can move the uh, ball around in the ocean. And it's going to follow the uh, shape of the waves, which is pretty cool. And that is what I'm going to animate later in the tutorial. So click numpad 0 to see through the camera. And then click shift F to use the fly cam. And you move around with W, A, S, A, and D just like in a video game and then left click to confirm the location you want 
And as you can see now, we have the uh, basic animation. But what I want to do next is to animate the location of the ball as well. And it's not going to be very hard. I'm just going to um, animate the location of the plane by keyframing them. So click N to see the coordinates, and then click I and I on the location and rotation. And then move forward in time, and then just click G and move it to a point you want to have it in the seam. And then click I and I again to keyframe. Okay, so now the animation part of the tutorial is basically done. So let's go back to the first frame and then click play. And I think I'm happy with the results. So uh, now it's time to start adding all the materials and the sky and so on. Okay, so let's click file and save the file. So save as, then give it a name. I'm just going to call it one. And then if you want to see what the scene looks like in rendered view, you can just click shift set, but we don't have any light yet. So, um, but first I need to remove the plane so that you don't see it in the animation. And I'm going to start off by adding the uh, sky texture. So click use nodes and then add sky texture. Set the first value to one and then the second value to one as well. And then the third value, make it around 2.9, which I think looks good. So let's go to render view. And as you can see, you get kind of the uh, like sky look to the scene. Okay, so now that we have the sky texture, it's time to add a material for the water or the ocean. So right click to select the ocean and then go to materials. And this material is going to be a glossy material. So click use nodes. And then go into rendered view by clicking shift set and change to glossy and then change the roughness to let's say 0.11 at this point you don't have to copy everything I do you can just um, add the roughness and color you want but I'm going to copy the same color that I used when I tested out the um, ocean modifier before I recorded this tutorial but I don't think the colors that I add are very realistic, but I think they look good for uh, kind of a cartoony-ish uh, ocean uh, animation. So uh, for the uh, ball, I'm going to give it kind of a orange uh, shade. Since I haven't added the uh, main sun lamp yet, it doesn't look very uh, orange. So uh, let's just add a color and then add the sun. Okay. And then go back to solid view by clicking shift set and then add a lamp by clicking shift a or a sun actually okay so change the size to one and then change the strength to uh, five okay and now it's time to move the sun so click g to grab and then let's go to the top view click numpad seven to go to the top view and then click g again and I think I want to rotate, so click R to uh, rotate. Left click to confirm, and I click R set to rotate it on the Z axis. Okay, and then I'm going to delete the other lamp. So right click and then X to delete. And this is what it looks like in rendered view. Okay, so now that we have the colors and the uh, background, I think it's time to start messing with the render settings. So uh, click the camera icon, and then increase the resolution quality to 100%, the frame rate to 30 FPS, and then scroll down to sampling and increase the render samples to, um, I think in my case, 300. If you don't have a GPU, you can just use your CPU. And for the output, I'm going to make a new folder and you can make the folder wherever you want on your computer, but that is going to be where you save all your rendered uh, images for your animation. And it's going to start rendering the animation. So I'm just going to call the images toots and then I'm going to make a test render first. And I think the result is good. So now it's time to uh, start rendering the animation itself. So, um, Let's just save one more time. I'm going to call this one two. 
because it's the second file. And before we start rendering the animation, let's just play the uh, video one more time to see if it looks good enough. And I think it looks great. So um, let's just pause and then click animation to start rendering. And after a few hours of rendering, this is what it looks like. If you have any questions about this tutorial or how to render, just leave them in the comments. And thank you guys for watching.